Welcome to The Rational Egoist. I'm your host, Michael Leibowitz. There are a few topics more controversial in society than that of gun rights and gun laws and people that want to put restrictions on gun ownership. And there's a lot of that out there. But today's guest, he actually wants more people to be armed. And after listening to him, I think if you aren't convinced, you might just be. He's the founder of Black Guns Matter, Maj Tori. Welcome to the show. What's up? How are you? I'm doing great. So just to let people know, what's your background? I mean, you didn't just wake up one day and all of a sudden you're this libertarian activist who's promoting the Second Amendment. You, uh, you have a history. So where where did you get this? What, what's going on? So first, it, it actually, we're, oddly enough, I did become a, a libertarian activist, just like. Really? But, it, but that story goes more than just um, like I said. I think everybody makes decisions based on what they think is best for them as they get new information. If you're a stronger right. person, like I, we're, we're coming up on the end of the year. Everybody's going to say, I'm going to start X, Y, and Z um, next year. Everybody's going to start next year. Everybody's going to do whatever. I always try to keep a watch on. Um, everybody's going to say, I'm going to get started come the new year, right? Solutionaries don't do that. I'm a solutionary. Solutionaries deal with the issue head on. And if you've recognized some of the people watching may feel like I've recognized that alcoholism is in my future if I don't stop drinking. Not me personally, but anybody listening. Mm -hmm. They may feel like, yo, I love I enjoy smoking, but I have not made money off of it. Um, and it's actually taking money away from me and my family. Instead of saying I'm going to stop January the 1st, which turns into January the 15th, which turns into March just stop right now. Just stop. So when I was exposed to information that was more of party related, um, I was already on board because of the information that I've been, I had been reading since I was in high school. I say the story a lot. When I was in school, everybody know, you know, I, I was outside, did what I did. And uh, I used to leave school if there were no sales to get or, you know, whatever, if I had already sold everything out. Um, I would take tours of City Hall. I'm from Philly. Philly has tremendous history. Philly has tremendous um, backdrop as it relates to liberty. Philadelphia oh, is the birthplace of America. The Marines were created in Philly. The concept of Mother's Day was created in Philadelphia. The first like portable PC was like manufactured in Philly. It's a city of firsts. And so saying this to say, I would take tours all around the place and I would have these stories that as it relates to um, liberty. Uh, you know, having a conversation, reading about Malcolm X or even going further back, reading about Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, and then hearing about Patrick Henry, uh, 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 Thomas Paine, uh, uh, Frederick Bastiat, um, all, and Bastiat was French, but my point here is hearing all of these different stories, I was already steeped in liberty and I didn't have somebody in between telling me that this is a different type of freedom than that. Um, and so... When I got exposed to libertarian ideology, yes, immediately. I was already advocating for these concepts, whether if it was um, years ago, I sold newspapers, The Burning Spear. It was an organization um, called the Uhuru Movement. Um, Uhuru is Swahili for freedom, or Ki Swahili for freedom. Um, I sold those papers. I sold The Black Star, which is a Marcus Garvey newspaper. I was always involved in this concept of liberty, but when... Politically, I was more Republican because of the fact that I know that America is a constitutional republic. But those guys, those men that created this foundational situation, those guys were actually more of liber what we would call libertarians now. Yeah. They were classic liberals. Um, current modern day so-called liberals have co-opted that term to mean some shit that it's not what it means. And so when you say I wasn't just one day decide to be a libertarian activist it kind of weirdly was that way because once i was exposed to the party itself the, the the matrix did a very good job of keeping the concept of libertarian party away from my brain you know what i mean and a lot of people in urban demographics and seeing that is why i was like oh absolutely i immediately switched my political affiliation from republican to libertarian uh, i immediately you know and talking years later having conversations with mike heiss who was one of the dudes from that founded the Mises Caucus that in essence was like, bro, you should think about running. And initially I had started Black Guns Matter. We had a lot of traction with that. And I just was like, I don't know, bro. 
Um, but I wanted to see what that process looked like. And so I ran for local office for city council as a libertarian. My point in saying all of this is um, we are kind of like groomed into the direction of life that, you know, all of your training leads up to the point of where you are right now. And so whether those lessons are appreciated or not, or spoken loudly or identified as the fight for liberty and the fight for freedom, you yourself, if you've done decades, decades behind the wall, your entire life is talking about freedom. You have sure. decades of thinking about freedom. And I think we do a disservice to ourselves by isolating and, and compartmentalizing this conversation. So for me, it was it was very much so. Um, I was already active in being an activist in my community in, in, in di different ways. Uh, but when it came to seeing libertarianism, the party, and at that time, the leadership was um, very, very weak. Sarwark was, you know, he courted me to try to come over to his side. And I think he was very, very weak and disingenuous. So I still was a libertarian. I had already been reading libertarian philosophy. I had already been reading, um, I, I have the chronicles from like 1980 to like, well, all of that. Um, I've spoken at Freedom Fest, good friends of mine for years before I even came out as libertarian, good friends of mine, Mark Victor over in Arizona. So the liberty concept wasn't a, a transition for me. It was just, okay, mm -hmm. I got to put this word more prominently pronounced. And so in that process of all of those things that inculcated, and then in the, the gun space, and then in the Second Amendment space, and then in the um, community activism space, this all comes back down to liberty. Limited government on the people's ability to live their lives in a way without being infringed upon. Whether that's the same conversation that would happen if, if you're a uh, so-called pro-black community activists, if you're a so-called white nationalist that feels like there's an attack on white people, it does not matter. Whatever you feel like there is some sort of infringement on whatever you view to be liberty, right? Um, and I use those two, I want to go back a bit. I use those two examples because they're extreme examples of the same, you know, on the same spectrum. Um, some people think that people saying pro-black things for the black community is racist. And some people think that white nationalists, so-called white nationalists that are saying, yo, white dudes are under attack. They th and I'm not talking about dudes that just hating people. Mm -hmm. But my point is, conceptually, those are at the end of the spectrum. That's why I use that example. Not saying that those are exactly the same. I'm talking about people's perception. But my point in, my point in uh, dealing with that is, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, you're still fighting for what you perceive to be as liberty. Your tactics, whether you're right or not, is a whole different conversation, but um, and and recognizing that it was like, yo, let's just put this label uh, that's called liberty on it or libertarianism because it's the third largest political party, especially after the Mises Caucus took over that actual leadership of the party, and I was a little more comfortable with the direction of it. I started to go kind of like, all right, cool, you know what I mean? Um, and and we're seeing what's happening, even with all of the infighting, even with all of the prags don't fuck with the Meekhawks and this don't fuck with that, even with that. Even us being splintered, we still are scaring the living shit out of the duopoly. We got Tucker Carlson and Klaus Schwab both attacking libertarianism damn near in the same week. Think about that. Klaus Schwab literally saying there's this thing called libertarianism yeah. that's anti-state movement. At the same time, Tucker Carlson, who has for the very longest time, just because you got fired or let go from Fox, doesn't mean you, we ignore the fact that you were kind of authoritarian back to blue for a very long time. Love that he's more willing and free to talk about some more topics uh, on X or his television show. Love that. But I'm not going to pretend like you wasn't a bastion of liberty, bro. You no. was a back to blue no. dude. Like, no. you, like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. and within the same week where we have Klaus Schwab, the WEF guy, since we're talking about seemingly extremes, Klaus Schwab is the evil overlord. And Tucker Carlson is just pretty much a a pundit that talks about political views. And I think he's doing a better job now since he's been off Fox. But these are both guys, maybe not, I think Klaus Schwab is 100% accurate on what libertarianism, why he's telling other world leaders, hey, we got to take this libertarian thing down in so many words. But I don't think, uh, I don't think people like Tucker Carlson actually know modern day liberty and libertarianism. You think it's just guys running naked on a stage and that's not what the fuck it is. And so, um, but saying this all to say, this is one of the greatest opportunities for us to really galvanize, especially in the urban space. And that's, that's my space. So saying all of this to say, <laughs> it's been a 20, 30 year long 
True. overnight switch, if, if that makes sense. All right. So you said so much that so much I want to get into. First of all, you said when you were going to school and would leave and make sales. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, w- w- when I was coming up, that means you're out selling drugs, correct? Well, some people would call it drugs. Some people would call it plants. Whatever. It does, doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. But my, my, my only point is this. I tried selling drugs when I was young. I couldn't do it. Like, I just wasn't good at it. Yeah. So I understand that it's not just a matter of, hey, let me go buy some drugs at X price and then sell it at Y price and I'm going to get rich. It takes entrepreneurial ingenuity to, be able to do it. And more than that, when you're at risk, you can't just call the cops no. to, to come protect you like you could if you were a package store owner. Not at all. So I'm just wondering, could because you also mentioned you were selling newspapers. How much did that entrepreneurial spirit that you obviously have influence you? in your desire for liberty or in your willingness to accept the libertarian ideas? I don't want the government in my shit. (laughs) I got, I got, I got friends that are doing football numbers for weed that I walk past the dispensary every so often. Um, I don't want 40% of my money being taken from an entity that didn't put in on the work. I don't want, I was on a, a, a zoning board call a few days ago for a developer friend of mine and the level of insane, first you gotta go through the RCO, which is almost like a homeowner's association for the neighborhood that this property was located at. Then you gotta go through the zoning board to get a variance to build and develop something and bring it back to life. I don't give a fuck about the government having something to say in that because they didn't put in on it. So when you start selling things and when people are getting mad at developers, and I'm not saying that all developers or entrepreneurs have scruples. I think a lot of them are, you know, scrupulous. Um, But when you have genuine people in some of these zoning board meetings, we're seeing small husband and wife companies that just bought two little buildings on one block and they live in one and they're trying to rehab one to kind of like pay for the, you know, whatever. And these nerds are in essence telling them, no, you can't put an addition onto your roof. Yeah. These are the things that I'm like, if the general public understood this, they would see, Never mind the fact that zoning laws came about in the 1900s as a way to make sure black people wasn't in certain fucking locations. It started in New York. So this whole entire economy of stopping people from developing the things that they own, whether through the mortgage in the bank or outright, you're telling me that we can't do anything with it. And seeing that uh, I can go to jail for selling a product that someone wants, that someone asked me for, that someone has the, that's called commerce. That's called free market enterprise. When I see um, young men in jail for damn near double life sentences for making a website, Ross making a website didn't didn't do no violence and all of that. I see that government is corrupt in that regard. So it's a it's an easy, understandable thing for everybody in urban America. When I see people getting boots on their cars because they didn't want to be strong armed to pay for a ticket to park a car somewhere, right? When I see them taking people's cars, when I see asset forfeiture and the hood recognizes that. When I see law enforcement officers running people down, speeding, breaking their own rule to chase them, to give them a ticket because their taillight was out and not even fucking helping them, not giving them a spare taillight, none of those different things. When I see road pirates and revenue generation for the state does, that does not improve the quality of life for Americans, I'm I'm apt to say, fuck this. Nice. And so it's an easy transition. And that's the reason why, regardless of how people feel about whatever fragment of the Liberty movement fucking get in urban America and do some of the work. Like yeah. that's, that's the win. There's a reason why Democrats got the, the hood on lock. There's a re and that lock is very swiftly opening and changing. The pendulum is swinging, but we need more lip. We don't need them just to talk about Dem- Republicans no. that are the Republicans of old mm-hmm. that are almost like, as Michael Malice says, you know, progressive just driving the speed limit. We need people that are actually going to fight for liberty. And so libertarians have to do that. And engaging with so many Republicans that I have as friends, love them to life. But overall, they're, the GOP is not doing the type of work that they no. used to be doing, no. you know, or or used to stand for. Frederick Douglass was a Republican. Frederick Douglass is top tier, hands down, the best conservative of all time, of all time. 
they are a far cry away from that. So if we want these things to change, we kind of got to like, all right, cool. I get it. This person don't like this person. Let's just go in here and do the work and highlight the section of the Liberty movement that you down with. You know what I mean? Frederick Douglass is one of my absolute heroes. There's a line in the narrative life of Frederick Douglass when he's getting ready to fight with the slave owner. And he says, up until now, I told you how a man became a slave. Now I'm going to tell you how a slave became a man. Just hearing it, think it, it just gives me chills. Like he, he was just an absolute, like when I was in prison, anytime I would start to think like poor me, I would think about, look, I'm guilty as hell of violent crimes. And my life is nowhere near as hard as this man's was who committed no crime. Matt, uh, uh, initially I wanted you on to talk about guns, but I can yeah. see you are about so much more than guns. Yeah. So I, so I, I want to broaden this out. Yeah. You mentioned Republicans earlier, how you left the Republican party and you were talking zoning. Something that I found, and I, I point this out to conservatives, conservatives claim that they're for small government, right? But at least here in Connecticut and you know elsewhere as well, they're for zoning laws. Mm -hmm. They're for the war on drugs. Yep. They're they're very strong. They're they're constitutional or originalist, except for when it comes to qualified immunity to cops. And yep. I've told conservatives, I says, you don't find it funny that you're for for small government in every case except for when it affects blacks. Except when you're zoning zones blacks out of your neighborhoods, except yeah. for when it puts black kids in prison for selling drugs, except for when it lets police get off the hook for mistreating black kids. Yeah. Even if that's not your intention, when you have the history of the country the way it is, and then if I'm a, if I'm a young black kid and, and I'm listening to a political argument from a guy who says he's advocating for capitalism and freedom, but then he says that pe that that people can can't do what they want with their own property when it comes to renting to me, when I can't sell what I want, and when cops can mistreat me, I'm skeptical. I'm like, yeah. no, that, no, that doesn't make any sense. So I can fully grasp why you would not want to be at all involved with the Republicans. I also, yeah. I listened to you give a speech where I met you was at the Connecticut Libertarian Party convention. And you talked about liberty minded people going into black neighborhoods. And I've long thought that because in prison, I know you might be surprised to know, but they're not all white people in prison. Yeah. So, so I've talked to people, many races and contrary to what people might think we mix because there's so few people in prison that are into education that those of right. us that were, regardless of race, would get together. Right. And we would tend to debate things that are not comfortable for your average, I would say, American uh, out in society to debate. And yeah. what I found was when dealing with guys from the inner city, they were open to liberty ideas, yeah. to, to gun rights, for for instance, to, to, to lower taxes, to freedom of choice when it comes to education so i think you're really on to something there i just it's, think you it takes guts it's going to take people willing it can't just be for instance maj tory going into these neighborhoods no it has to be white people that are willing to engage it has to be it has to be all americans that make up the liberty movement making daily strides in conversations in different spaces one of the examples that i always give give is, is let's say if you you happen to be white or Asian, or Hispanic, and you in the Liberty Movement, and you happen to listen to Tupac, or insert whoever, and you at the gas station, and you talking about, you see somebody with a Tupac t-shirt on, or whatever t-shirt, right, Lil Baby, whoever, and you actually, you genuinely listen to that music, spark up a conversation, yo, bro, I really, really rock with him, where'd you get that shirt, da 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 da, -da. hip hop is kind of like one of the most last bastions of free enterprise, and just start leaning that conversation that way. It could be just a drop into the seed. I love how hip hop, you know, talks about getting money and free market enterprise. You don't got to say capitalism, say free market enterprise. And you're planting the seed. If you do this all over the place, that word kicks up somewhere else. Like when you buy a truck, then you start seeing that truck everywhere. Same concept happens. You buy a coat, you start seeing everybody with that coat. That mind is now open up to that possibility. But it, it has to be a collective effort and it has to be genuine. It can't be like, hello, freedom, fellow freedom lovers. I am also from urban America. It, you can recognize those differences while finding the similarities and hit that target when you can hit that target. It also isn't a hard stretch for us to have liaisons. People that like, like if, if I'm, I'm not a real estate dude, my real estate dude is a real estate dude. I go into rooms, if I say I want to get that building, I go in with my real estate dude. 
You have to have a consigliere or, or, or a, a liaison. We can start, I, I say all the time at the events, you guys should start using me to be at these events and we can do outreach in these different cities. And then it's like, damn, they're on the job training. My point in saying that is, this is the grassroots uh, feet, boots on the ground game that Democrats have done and they do it every election cycle. Now, if we're not doing it and presenting our ideas in the marketplace of urban America, and if the GOP isn't doing it, right? Nobody does it. The last person that I, on a national level that was really, really on it like that, unfortunately for our movement, it was Trump. He was like, listen, bro, let's let's cut the check. Let's do some money. I was in the White House a few years ago where Trump gave the speech and he started out the speech. It was at the, um, I forget the name of the organization, but anyway, it was mostly young black Trump supporters. And he said, African-Americans built this country. He's like, I don't know if you guys knew it and I don't think you're getting credit for it, but I think now you're starting to, more people are open to being willing to say you're getting credit for it. He's like, yeah, we all built it, but African-Americans had a special hand in building it. That shit never makes it onto mainstream media. My point in saying that is, damn near in a couple of weeks, his brand, right? Because the hip hop community always loved Donald Trump until the messaging from the extreme left made it go like, you're not supposed to like him, he's racist. And again, this is the black clear. Trump. <laughs> right, right, Raekwon, right? These are the things that I'm not saying it as Trump is perfect or I think that his stance on certain things isn't horrific. I think he overspends, I do. I think he isn't solid on the second amendment, I do. But when we're talking about damn near single-handedly shifting the narrative as it relates, even with the onslaught of propaganda, that extreme leftist media, legacy media did, he still was able to get a big chunk of the black vote. And sure. strong dudes was like, yeah, I don't know about that racist shit. And he might say some shit that I disagree with, but his policies and I like to do it. Even if he's saying some asshole shit, I believe that's him. As opposed to people that get on the podium and there's some on the trail campaign trail right now. I've been very critical of Vivek Ramaswamy. You say one thing in one location, you say another thing in another location. That's not the type of politician that we need. I'm, I, I, I like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on an independence hit, but he's anti-gun. And I don't believe his over the last two months sway of saying, oh, I'm not really anti-gun anymore. I don't believe it. So my point in saying this is we need to look for, especially on a local level, look for candidates that are in alignment with liberty, libertarians. And if they aren't there, you can be one of them. If you're really a libertarian, if you really see these things can be changed. And if you got a small town, run for office. If you go over to what we're doing with Project Decentralized Revolution is we're having a bunch of local and state candidates to just run. Now, if these guys win and they're pushing, because the general public is open to this. We see what just happened in Argentina. The people overwhelmingly wanted Javier Millet. They wanted him. And so that means there's a thirst for liberty. Run as a candidate. Get behind a candidate that's libertarian. It does not have to be on a national level. To be perfectly honest, we do not have the same powerful infrastructure that Democrats and Republicans have. That's why they and their talking heads are in opposition to us. Because as we wrestle more power away from them, like the great Larry Sharp said, you'll have better Democrats and better Republicans when libertarians are in the room. And so they just don't want us in the room because then they got to actually do the fucking job while they're in power or the power and the jobs as far as public servants come over to us. So it's a very, very um, necessary, critical, and uh, uh, we've already got their attention. You're on their radar. If in a week, Tucker Carlson and Klaus Schwab are kind of low key talking shit about libertarians, you have their attention. Now you have to win. And we all need to get in the same boat and get across this ocean to the land of liberty. That's just the reality. First, I think it's interesting you mentioned Larry Sharp. I talked to him this morning and told him I yeah. was going to be interviewing you. And he said, oh, I love Maj. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you two coordinated where he praises you, you praise him. I don't know. No, it's just I'm just, kidding. I'm just I'm just kidding. There's 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 libertarians that I think are fucking complete shitbags. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and for me, it's like, you know, there's a lot of guys in New Hampshire that aren't even worth me mentioning that a lot of them don't even have a position of power anymore. I think they're fucking shit bags. I think they're hiding their bigotry behind uh, so-called patriotism and so-called liberty. And I think they're goofballs. However, 
I think that those people know more about liberty than the very, very famous politicians that are in office nationally now. It's just what it's just the reality of it. And so um, when it comes to people that like Larry Sharp, like he doesn't really talk much about liberty, but like Eric July, Eric July is killing it with an independent comic book. That's 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 snatching some of Marvel and Disney's money. I love it. I love it. Million dollar campaigns, multi-million dollar campaigns for independent comic. None of the bullshit, just actual strong characters. Good dudes like that. Dudes like uh I I, I like I think Dave Smith is arguably one of the sharpest, articulate, witty, and um charismatic libertarian positioned people that we may have ever had. Obviously, everybody knows Ron Paul and Rand Paul. That's like obvious. I'm not um, a fan. Not a fan of Dave Smith. Why? Uh, well, that's what we're going to get into. I'm okay, let's talk. An excellent it. transition point. Yeah. My introduction to the liberty movement were, were mm -hmm. two books: "Free to Choose" by Milton Friedman and mm -hmm. "The Law" by the, Frederick Bastiat. Yeah, great books. Yeah. After reading Bastiat's "The Law," I started calling myself a libertarian. That was in, I think, 1999. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody in the classical liberal tradition that I, that I haven't read study. Right. So I always call myself a libertarian. I got out of prison. Uh, I reached out to the Connecticut libertarian party and I actually became the spokesperson for them. Okay. Shortly thereafter, I stopped calling myself libertarian and much the same reason for why people stopped using the term liberal because it no longer accurately catches me. Okay, and and I'm going to tell you, there's two strands of the liberty movement right now that I see, gauging from social media. That may not be the best gauge, but that's what. No, I but have. it's but it's it's a, at it, least it's, a, temperature. Yeah, it, it's something, right? Yeah. So, one is the Mises Caucus. Mm -hmm. Two is what I would call pop culture libertarians, like the okay. two people that spoke with you at. Um, I shouldn't say with you; they spoke at the same event you spoke with, it, namely yeah. Josie, the uh, redheaded libertarian, and Clint Russell. Yeah, the Mises Caucus. I have basically, I, if I had to conceptualize it, I'd say three beefs of them. Okay, one has to do with integrity. Two has to do with the, the the way they present themselves, and three is policy. Okay, the integrity position is this: I've read virtually everything the great Ludwig von Mises ever wrote, mm -hmm. and I have zero doubt that the Mises Caucus pursues positions in his name that he never ever would have went for. Give I me think an anarchy, anarcho capitalism, uh, secession down to the individual. I know for a fact he wouldn't do that because I know his quotes on the necessity of a state in order to protect capitalism. Immigration, the candidate that they endorsed uh, for, the, while it's not in their platform, they endorsed Michael Rechtenwald, his position on immigration and also his position on abortion that they're declared president. So that, that, so those are the things. Hey, I want you to, I want you for the people that are not as read, okay. clarify the distinction and, dis and distinguish between the two. Between what? Mises's position. Okay, and Mises Caucus's position. Okay, Mises Wall's position. Just gotcha. so people have okay. a more Mises Mises was a classical liberal. He said as much. He's written many times that anarchy cannot be properly called socialist or liberal because it is on its own. He said, unfortunately, and I can't quote exactly from memory, but this is the basis. He says the way human beings are, we need to have a state. You need to have a government. Mm -hmm. If you can have secession down to the individual level, which is what the Mises Caucus has on their platform, if you can have all... Secession down to the individual level or respect for the rights of the smallest the republic? Secession. They, 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 it's in their platform, secession okay. down to the individual level. Okay. Plus the most prominent you know, members advocate for anarcho-capitalism. Be, beyond that they also say that all security who, who, which which one of them would you classify as their dave most smith. prominent members i'd that say day? i would say uh dave smith i would say uh what's his name scott horton um as far as the intellectual base for it hoppa i, I would say would be in there um walter block 
I, I would say is in there. I don't know if they're technically members of the Mises caucus, but they're the intellectual backdrop of the Mises caucus. The Mises caucus says they took their name from the Mises Institute, which was founded by Murray Rothbard and Lou Rockwell, both anarcho-capitalists. So Mises would not support that. I think the Mises caucus would have been better off calling themselves the Rothbard caucus or the Hoppe caucus. Okay. Um, Jeffrey Tucker, who I interviewed, who was a student of Rothbard, said the same thing. They shouldn't call themselves the Mises Caucus. The bow tie and, guy, right? Yes. And talking to members of the Mises Caucus, uh, personally, some have told me, yes, we should be called the Rothbard Caucus. Okay. So there's that. Um, Mises was pro-immigration, pro the free movement of goods and labor across borders. Uh, Rechtenwald, the, the candidate, says, no, it's a private property issue. And then he ascribes private property to government. Pro it's a very government property. It's a very confused position that he takes. And it's also, I believe, unconstitutional. And then his abortion, uh, his abortion position is even contra Rothbard, where Rothbard thought that abortion should be legal. Rechtenwald says, no, uh, abortion shouldn't be legal. I also uh, had Rechtenwald on, on my podcast. Rechtenwald was a Marxist. Then he was a Democrat, then mm -hmm. back to a Marxist, then to a Trump apologist. Now he calls himself a libertarian. Mm -hmm. On my show, he couldn't explain self-ownership. Self he also said that he's never read Rothbard's economics, despite <laughs> calling himself a Rothbardian. Okay. Okay. So th there's a lot in there. I, I disagree with the positions, first of all. I don't think you can have secession down at the individual level. I think capital capitalism needs objective law, which means a government that protects, as Bastiat said, the rights, uh, the, the uh, right to life, liberty, and property of its citizens. Mm -hmm. Then there's the issue of presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Alabama Mises Caucus. Mm -hmm. And I understand that the Mises Caucus can can say, well, that's local. We're not, you know, it's not a local thing. Yeah, I get whatever. It. They take the name Mises Caucus. And if you're not going to disavow them, to me, they represent you. They posted a picture of the Unabomber. Do you remember when the Unabomber was wanted? And they, had, they had the sketch of him with the glasses yeah. in the hood. The Alabama Mises Caucus posted that on Twitter with a quote from Kaczynski. And then it said, R.I.P. Uncle Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Ted for a guy who's a murderer. Not my thing. Not yeah. my jam. The, the guy's a murderer, right? Uh, the folks from New Hampshire, who you're talking about, posted a picture. They're not Mises Caucus. They're just part of the reason I don't call myself a libertarian. Okay. They got a picture of themselves, uh, of not themselves, of Israeli hostages being released from Hamas with a quotation underneath that says, don't you wish your girlfriend would look at you the way they look at the at Hamas? That's yeah. disgusting, right? That That's gross. Then once this Israeli war uh, broke out, and I'm not for... Uh, foreign aid. I'm not yeah. for sending troops over there, but there's no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. The Mises caucus, Dave Smith, Scott Horton. What do, what do you mean there's no equivalence between Israel? And I mean, the, what I mean is the it, IDF. I'm talking about the, the, well, the problem is, is Israel encompasses a lot more than Hamas. Israel encompasses the government of Israel. It encompasses the people of Israel. It encompasses the military forces. It encompasses the, that's what I mean. Like I'm the, 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 the Mossad. It. So I'm taking, I'm taking all, all of that. And that's not to say, and look, Israel's a semi-socialist state, right? I'm not going in, in, in very, you know, has a lot of religious elements, Mm -hmm. But in but and we'd have to go into a long history, which I, I don't really want to want to get into and what proper government is. My only point is this, is that there were a lot of quotes coming out of the Mises caucus that were very anti-Israel, not mm -hmm. so many that were anti-Hamas, also not so many that attacked every other government that engages in the same thing. I went to the Mises caucus's website and I, I not website, the uh, their X feed or Twitter feed. Mm -hmm to see what they what they've been talking about. There are far more quotes or, or, or posts on there about Israel than there are about Austrian economics, about the Austrian theory of the trade cycle, about mm -hmm. individual rights, about the proper scope of government. So to you that you think it's kind of like almost like focus more on the message message of if you're saying most of their members are kind of like Rothbardian, talk about those things. Talk about right the, the, the meat and potatoes of yeah. the thing. Even okay. though I disagree with those positions, it seems to me that the fact that you're putting so much emphasis on Israel, I don't like to throw out um, terms like anti-Semitism or racism. I think they're lazy because it, it, it kind of gives you a shortcut to winning an argument. 
On the other hand, there are people that are anti-Semitic and there are people that are racist. And when you spend three quarters of your time bashing Israel while not talking about- You could be perceived as anti-Semitic. Right. Doesn't mean you are. I'm not accusing that. So let me say this. One, every single thing that you just said is a 100% gripe and a legitimate gripe to have. So let me, none of that shit matters. Now let me tell you why. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter in a sense of be attempting to sound rude to your reasons for why you have some Mm -hmm. gripes, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've some of those I've had similar with the same guys from that helped and then switched that were representing Mises in New Hampshire and then weren't anymore. I've said to them, I've said, hey, which were far more blatant than, um, you know, again, the people that run the New Hampshire Twitter feed. Um, one of them being gone now, ousted, right? I think they're clowns. They don't represent, I think that there are members of the Ku Klux Klan and that organization identifies as a Christian organization. I don't think that necessarily burning crosses and hanging black people is the Christianist thing to do. Definitely not. So I'm not, I'm not disagreeing about the disagreement about, you know, their approach, but all of the stuff that you said You guys are well read. And this is the part that I say to all of the fucking libertarians. You guys are arguing about moral and or uh, theoretical or philosophical arguments. Yes. And I'm not I'm not in opposition to that. None of the things that you said are maybe maybe the immigration or uh, 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 free moving across borders. Some I'll I'll give a little more room for that, because I think there's uh, there's potential political ramifications for that argument on either side, right? Or it's not even potential. It is. If a bunch of people come in, if some people believe like, yo, we can't have free moving trade and a welfare state, that that argument has teeth to it, right? Um, so I'm not going to say everything, but all of the other things as far as getting people into the movement and then letting them argue about this shit later after we fucking are all clear that Democrats and Republicans are fucking horrible for America. Horrible. You can True. say, uh, uh, for every argument you could present about Hamas, and I think there's a thousand bajillion legitimate ones in their terroristic activities, I could give you the same argument for the Israeli defense. I could give you the same argument. I could give you the fact that over 10,000 people have been fucking murdered since October the 7th. Palestinian people. So the argument between these moral conversations and who's more right and like the fucking uh victim olympics i think is a conversation that we should definitely have do i think that it takes precedent over getting more people in because while we're so-called infighting and i'm not i'm saying so-called because i don't want to minimize the importance or the beauty of philosophical debate over certain issues i don't want to do that i think there's it's the soho forum gene epstein motherfuckers should go there and argue it out But in the meantime, while we're doing that, right, the energy, let's blame me too. The energy that I spent on making memes, I got a t-shirt coming out with one of the goofballs from New Hampshire and it has him making a weird face and it says Karen on the bottom of it, right? I'm going to make a lot of money off that shit, a lot of money, but it does not sow unity. It does not Uh, express the principles of what libertarianism or what I call the black libertarian movement, because I'm taking the phrase BLM from BLM Incorporated because I want it to mean this now. I'm going to do to leftists what leftists do to us. Take the name. I'm I'm taking this shit. My point in saying this is there will be some black people that did really, really good work under the guise of BLM Incorporated, even though the incorporation was a sham, that did some really, really good community work that are going to disagree with me by creating BLM, meaning Black Libertarian Movement. I don't give a fuck. I'll say, hey, listen, here are the things that we do agree on. Can Do you want to work with me on that? I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. When I did our first class in um, Atlanta for Black Guns Matter, where I took Black Lives Matter and made it BGM, right? I got an email from some person that was supposed to be the head of a chapter in Atlanta, and he felt some type of way that we were doing this. And I said, come to the gun range where the class is, and let's talk about it. He didn't. I don't give a fuck at this point. What I do know and did know at that point, and the reason why I can speak so passionately about this is what I do know is this community, the urban community across America needs to be more involved in the Second Amendment fight. 
whether we talk about if the gun control act should be repealed and if that's really second amendment or not, or our licenses to carry um, constitutional or not, those are 100% philosophical questions and conversations that I'm open to. I'm going to win when I take the time to have that conversation with someone, right? Just like in my opinion, if you sat down with Dave Smith and, or, and I'm not saying this to be rude and, or Mike Heiss, I believe that they'd give you a real, real education on some of the things that you just said. And I think that makes for good content. I'll say this. I want you to chop this up, send it to them, tag it in them. I'll post them in it. And they should come have that conversation with you there. I've, I've uh, listen, let me just tell you something. Yeah. I've tagged, I've posted to Dave Smith. Okay. I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds because I want to address what you're saying. Yeah. Dave Smith has repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again, misrepresented Benjamin Netanyahu. I interviewed the woman that broke the story that Dave Smith keeps citing to go after Netanyahu. I'm you not think a, Netanyahu is not a gangster. No, that's not at all. I'm not saying that okay. at all. What I'm saying is where, that where, where, where has Dave Smith represented him as he quotes him over and over again as, as saying, we have to support Hamas to stop a two state solution that first of all, the quotes taken out of context. Secondly, it's not a direct quote. Thirdly, that's not his position. I don't fucking live in Israel. I don't I, give a okay, look. Okay. Wait, 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 you're, that's you're making this is my what I'm point. Saying. This, this is you're, what I'm saying. You're making this, my point. We don't live no. in Israel. So no. why so much focus on it? I'll give you, I'll tell you why. Because American tax dollars, because a lot of people, if urban demographics were more loud about this and educated about it and seeing how they're being played in the name of like, oh, the innocent Israelis. No, none of you motherfuckers are innocent. And the hypocrisy is so lopsided that when some, when the Jewish dude says like, no, I'm not celebrating fucking death, but I can't pretend like, the Israel side that's I share a religion with is all peaches and cream. That's the equivalent of me saying, no, I'm, I love hip hop music. I love culturally, but I'm not going to pretend like some of that shit is not a fucking psyop okay. that's fucking my community. Maj, there's the problem with that. And this is the thing. I want to get back to communicating liberty message, but here's the problem. You can't, you, you cannot tell someone if I'm, they have a context of how they're articulating because American tax dollars and support different as argument. opposed to different argument matters. If, no, if you, it's if, not. listen, if you listen under no circumstances, I don't care what they are. Should people being be in America be forced by taxation to fund somebody else's war? I can so educating I, people about how it's being lied about in that media. Yeah. But here's the thing. I just, I can demonstrate where Dave Smith just mis misrepresenting the truth. With with how, but then when I did that, you said, "Well, I don't live in Israel." No, no, so no, no. How can not, I have? I'm not, I'm not stating. Then that's a conversation about that him. What you're calling misrepresenting the truth. What sure. I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. For me, for me. While us two gazelles are fighting each other, arguing about philosophical, let's let's tear this shit for a philosophical conversation, right? The argument, if the main focus is. In this conversation, you didn't say you you let in. I want to be very clear for the listeners. You you didn't like like pounce on me and trick me before off camera. Listeners, oh, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked yeah. about this. Yeah. But even during this interview, you haven't said here are the areas where I would support and work with Mises Caucus, and we'll figure out events that we can wholeheartedly disagree. Because I wouldn't raise. Huh? Here's the thing. You when you talk about communicating to a, a, a general public, the people that you want to bring over. When you want to do that, the message is vital. It's very important, right? Mm -hmm. If you are spend three quarters of your time on Twitter talking about Israel. I don't, dis I don't know, no, but I that's my I point. Disagree, I disagree with you on three quarters. You're saying numbers that I got to give you pushback on. Oh, well, go look. I, 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 that's go not, look. They, go they look. follow me. I follow them. I have their tweets on notification. Listen, this is like, now granted, this is like, I haven't looked in like two weeks. You, but I'm wait, but saying. wait, but wait, let's say this. Do you know what Maj has? Maj has a basic Liberty no. 101 class. Anyone that's interested in learning specifically about Liberty, let me, let me argue your point too. Which first. is why I'd work with Maj anytime. So I, I would be willing to bet that you would be, okay, so work with Maj. Sure. And figure out ways to debate Scott Horton and then say, we disagree on this in this Soho forum. But then when we go back outside, we put that to the side. And then regardless of where we stand on this argument about Israel or whatever, insert whatever thing to your point, we still have 50 trillion in fucking debt 
over the last however many years, money spent up. We are still back to endless fucking wars. We are still back to these things. These things are serious issues. Now, where one thinks that, do what, here's where I agree with you. I don't think that New Hampshire pages under the name of Mises, that vast majority of, excuse me, people in New Hampshire, libertarians in New Hampshire, and vast majority of lib state chapter leaders in other states have disavowed New Hampshire and said, we don't fuck with them. But at the same time, we're principled where we don't go, we're going to nuke their Twitter account. They get to be as dumb as they want. Liberty means that. It means they have the keys now. We don't fuck with that messaging. We choose to walk back. But what we're not going to do is steal their right to free speech. Well, that you sucks. wouldn't be you wouldn't be. Yes, you that, would that, be. Hold on. That that this is and now we can, if, if, now, we, if we went through and said that's we not could what get, we could get New Hampshire's page removed immediately. How, All we how? have to do is do a coordinated effort and complain to fucking X and everybody go do a fucking bot report, yeah. blah 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 okay. blah. The shit would be done in two days. Okay. Now we're gonna now I'm, I'm gonna pivot now to what I was talking about earlier, the pop culture libertarians. Mm -hmm. The view of free speech, because this is what I've seen touted all over Twitter by people calling themselves libertarians. Mm -hmm. They touted Alex Jones' return to uh, X as a victory for free speech. Free speech, going back at least to John Milton, means that the government cannot tell you what you can and can't say. It doesn't mean somebody has to give you a platform on which to speak. Alex That's not Jones. what I said or no, 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 hold on. That's not, wait, wait, wait. No, no cause you misframing that. No, because I, what I'm, what I'm Raj, saying is if, if I am you, not going to actively go towards saying we don't like what they're saying, even yeah. though they're wearing our t-shirt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll give you a perfect example. There was a guy that had a black guns matter t-shirt on. Yeah. Openly promoting socialism and all of this and burnt the flag and all of that other shit. You know what I got on television and said, I said, I don't know that guy. I don't know how he got one of our T-shirts, but we don't condone that. And he's free to do that. Fox News continued to give him a platform. I'll give you, as well as CNN. And I'm not going to advocate for him to get kicked off of CNN or Fox. Oh, once, once we've advocated and said, we disagree with that. We're not interested in that. They're doing that shit. When Christians say, we're not down with that Ku Klux Klan shit. Yeah. Ku Klux Klan still, whether I like it or they not, say they're Christians. Is saying Ku Klux Klan has a right to, on whatever platform, say what they want. Now, if Twitter decides to say we don't like what you're saying, cool. But I'm not gonna be a fucking rat and rat on somebody because they're saying some shit okay. that I don't like. Maj, you don't want to be a rat is different than it being having free speech implications. If you talk to the leaders of X and they take that group off of, of X. I'm ratting I'm, on those people. For I'm not, hold on. I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm disagreeing with is that it, it's a free speech issue. It's a free speech issue if you go to the government and have the government take them off. I'm not going to participate in anything that is going to block... If the Ku Klux Klan, it's not, but that's not down, speech. That's not free speech. It is free speech. You don't. You you read all of these things. You don't have. You have a very nominal understanding of the no, concept I don't. of free speech. Hold on. If uh, you, wait, wait. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of free speech. Okay. White racists could walk in front of my location and say, "We hate you, you fucking nigger." Yes. They could say that, and I wouldn't tell anybody. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Do you know why? They if they were if they were they're on, free to do it. If they're on X and they say. We hate borderline. That's what some of the fucking guys subtly, because they're pussies, some of the guys down at, in New Hampshire were doing <laughs> borderline. That's what they were doing. Yeah, I, I agree said, with that. Not only did I say when they got on spaces and wanted to rant and rave at me, I said, I don't want to talk to this guy. Let me talk. And I'm ignoring them. I didn't go yeah. report their page. I'm not because I actually live this concept. I live the concept of, okay, you get to say the vilest shit. Even if I made the mistake and you were on my team, and if I can't fire you directly, right? No different than some people in New Hampshire fired one of the fucking ringleaders, right? Yeah. The, new, the, the Free State Project. He, he's got to fucking go. Your antics and activities have not brought productivity. I'm not mad at them for firing him. They had a direct. They say, you're not representing us. And they that's my it. point. No different than we as the Mises Caucus, as other libertarians have said, we don't fuck with those guys. But what we're not going to do is then go, let's go tell on them to X. That's like reporting to the fucking government and the police. Well, it's not. That's embedded in who. Okay. Well, you think differently. No, what I'm if, saying if is. I don't, if, if I'm not a rat, right? I don't, yeah. I, I don't believe in that concept. They have a 
constitutionally, regardless of government involvement or not, I am going to respect their right to say dumb shit. I will also say, like I have said, I got a question, Maj. Let me ask you a question. Approach <laughs> is to your point. We're saying similarly on certain. Yeah, but things. I've got a question. I just want you to answer me a question. Hold on. Let me finish this and I'll answer your question. Okay. You guys have a right to say the dumb shit. Do I think that that tactic, this whole like, uh, uh, Nina Turner should maybe should pick crops for free or whatever. I think that's a bad tactic if you're trying to reach in the urban demographics. But the reality is those bigots, those few that had the keys weren't interested in reaching into urban demographics. So it's like, okay, cool. I've disassociated. That's where my minds ends. And I just go start working on the work. Yeah. And that's your right. All I'm saying to you is they don't have a constitutional right to be on X. That's not what I advocated for. No, but when, let, listen to what I'm, th- this is what I'm trying to communicate. When you say free speech, the term free speech has a meaning going back hundreds of years to at least Milton mm-hmm. that has to do with the government censoring people. So when someone- You're talking about as the as the, as that first amendment, I'm talking about- Yes, that's what I'm- that, that, No, no, that's no listen, listen. I respect every, let's take it out of the concept of government. I respect gotcha. anyone's human right to say whatever the fuck they want to say. Okay, and that and, and that's that's. And within, I'm not going to do anything. And that's I'll, your right. I'll, I'll separate myself from them, and which the Mises Caucus has, which I have. Yeah, which I Abe Smith has. Listen, all I'm saying, I, I don't know. I, I that I'm not arguing for New Hampshire whether they're good. It sounds bad. like I you are, my brother. No, what I'm saying is it's not a free speech issue whether they're on whether X lets them that's on. That's not, not what the argument is. You're, that, you keep reframing because it because that that's way. what you said, Maj. No, you I said didn't. It was free what speech. I'm saying is they do have the right to say that. If X decides to say we don't, I got kicked off of X for saying I'd assault a groomer. I'd assault a sexual deviant. Okay, that's what I was on. That's what I got kicked off of my original Twitter page for. So I didn't it, it, about it. No, I you did, agree I, that I, X I, has I, the right. You agree I, that X yes. has the right. Okay, yes. I'm with you. I'm, I agree with no, you. But wait, but wait. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. I said X has the right to do that. X highlighted maybe you guys aren't as free speech as you say you are. Cool, cool, because it's assault. I literally use the word assault. Mm-hmm. Right. Cool. I understand that I don't have the right to be on. X, you, I said something that violated your terms. You asked me to leave. Cool. What I did, what I will not do is if somebody says something that I think I have never, ever attempted to say, we should silence this person on any type of platform, any space, whether it's outside in real life or on Twitter, because they still have the right to just speak. Rights are non-negotiable. The technology changed. That's like saying, oh, well, you don't have a right to write a book because that's no, they have the right to say it. X has the right to say it violates our terms and agreements of service. Cool. But what I'm not going to do is then go after I've disavowed a person. I'm not every day, all day trying to showcase. I'm not tap dancing for the extreme left. I'm not showcasing how, Oh, we got to disavow. It's not enough to be not racist. You have to say how not racist. You, I'm not into that shit. No, so, I, I, Matt, Maj, I'm with you. I'm, I'm all I'm but, saying. But to you're you, characterizing some of the people as if I'm characterizing. They, they what haven't I'm, disavowed these guys. And I didn't have, say they didn't disavow. I don't know what they did. So you the say they, they have. have. I'm saying I know this. As far as the the Alabama Mises Caucus goes. When they posted the thing about the Unabomber, I mm-hmm. went to Connecticut Libertarian Leadership and I said, I want to disavow this because I don't want to be a part of it. And they said, we yeah. don't do that. That's the, that's that's one. Did I, you disavow I, it? I left the party. Is what so I they did. didn't disavow it? No. Why? I left. They said, we don't do that. They said, well, that's their local thing. We don't do that, which is within their rights. But it's within my right not to be a part of that, not to be cool. a part of it. So I, so I left. What I'm talking about is when we we got we pivoted to the free speech stuff, is there's people that I've seen over and over on Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, and in the mass media as well, that mm-hmm. think it's if a if a private organization, company, whatever, a, a private business, if a, if a private business doesn't want to let me in because I'm Jewish, in my view, that's within their absolute right to do so. Mm-hmm. Right? They're not violating my freedom of speech they're not violating any of my rights i have no right to be in there okay. just like nobody has a right to be on x if you went to x's leadership so wait 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 so you're equating 
a public or you're not you're not talking about a public space. You're saying a private location. I don't want your Jewish ass, your black right. ass, and X X is my house. ultimately a privately owned company. Okay, right. So all I'm telling you is, if you would have went, and I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying if you went and told them, I want New Hampshire taken off. X takes them off. Mm -hmm. That's not a First Amendment violation. You I, might. I'm not disagreeing with you. No, it's a rat. It's a it's a yeah, it's a rat it, violation. Yeah, and I'm that that's something totally I'm not, different. So so basically, yeah. you're saying the Mises Caucus is principled and stands on what they believe. No, no, and they, and, they, and they don't want to be rats. That's what you say. No, I left Thank the Mises you. Caucus. I love that compliment, no. my brother. First of all, I, I first of all, I would not use that to, to call a group principled who takes the name Mises to advocate for things he doesn't. I'd never call principled. Secondly, the way that they conduct themselves on Twitter, acting like they're mini Trumps. No, which one? I'm not with so that. many Trumps. They put they what? put Mises Caucus. How the hell do I know who's running the thing? I don't. So know. So you have a problem with an individual that you haven't done the research to Hold find on. out who that Hold person on. is. If that person represents the Mises caucus, mm -hmm. right? When, when, when the- So you understand doing things in alignment with representation. So because people don't want to rat on rats or what you would Listen, identify all, as- What I'm saying beings, to you, I didn't say, hold on, hold on. I didn't say, I, first of all, I never said anybody's a horrible being. I didn't say- No, that. no, no, I'm, I'm saying- What, I, think what I said, hold on. First of all, what I said from the get-go is the reason I no longer call myself a libertarian, which is fully within my rights to call myself whatever I want, oh. is- one, because of the way a lot of libertarians conduct themselves and in the, in the viewpoints they represent. And I, I named two. It's not a lot. It's what you're sections. saying is a lot. You just, two you, you go back The and Mises forth, Caucus. It's I'm some people I, in the I, caucus, I, and now on. you're saying a lot of libertarians. I will go. It's not even a lot it, of people in the Mises I, Caucus on. that are saying the shit that you're talking about. Is the, the Mises vast majority caucus, of my experience is the Mises Caucus platform in opposition to them dudes really? in New Hampshire okay. and that type of energy. Hold on. Is the Mises Caucus for secession down to the individual? Actually, uh, let's use me. It's let's in the platform, Maj. No, no, no. Let me speak for me. Maj, it's in the platform. Because you're doing one thing and you're making it speak for every single libertarian. And that's it's, wrong. No, I'm not. I'm saying you that. You are. It, no, you I'm, just, or the majority of libertarians. I didn't say that either. Here's I said what I will say to this. Here's what I'll say. I'll give you a perfect example. I believe that the concept of humans traveling and roaming freely is 100% the way that God intended. I believe that. I believe that. I also am up against the reality of the world that we live in right now. If I want to go to Japan and hang out and Japan's government says, these are our fucking borders and here are the rules. I can morally disagree with that, but then still are, am confronted with the reality of the situation. Yeah. It, so here's another reality of a situation. I believe that hum I so much in my heart believe that humans should be able to travel freely anywhere on the planet without passports. I love that concept. When I go to fucking North Korea, they have a different viewpoint. Now, if mines is completely open, right? Mines is completely open. People come in, take shit, do shit, leave, add no value. We have to acknowledge the fact if we have a welfare state, people coming in, taking shit, fucking the economy up we have to contend that that's something to contend with that's not difficult when did you your cell your cell when you was in there for decades you had to defend your motherfucking hut right or wrong well the co's did that for me so no, not really a motherfucker <laughs> came in there and if it wasn't yeah. a fucking a, a co around you got to defend what's in your fucking hut or were you letting people come in and out of your hut no they, they generally the don't they, they, they generally don't do that so but you the, created a border to your motherfucking hut. Well, actually, the, the, the jail creates the border. But here's the thing. But Maj, my point hold on. is, there was a jail rule as well as you wasn't. If a motherfucker listen, was welcome, argue for hut. argue. Listen, you can argue for immigration restrictions all you want. I'm not the bottom. For the bottom line, or, or, or Reckonwall can argue for. You're it. talking about a moral component, which I'm I'm agreeing with you on. A and the economic component. The economics by far say that immigrants benefit the country. They don't take from it. They give. The economy grows because of immigrants. I, that, I, so I, they're not I, taking I, from I, it. That's I, not 100, true. Listen, listen. And this is where I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you. Give me your poor, your tired, your huddled masses. I'm not, dis I'm not disagreeing with you in principle, <laughs> but I still have to match that principle across the everyday, what's happening all of the time. So, for example, for example. My cleaning lady is from Honduras, or my old cleaning lady. 
I am of the belief that she may be a so-called unlawful immigrant. I am of the belief of that. I am of the belief of that. One, I'm not fucking calling ICE. Two, she is one of the most hardworking, respectful, humble women that I've ever met in my life. So my point here is we have to acknowledge those two things exist in a bubble. Philosophically, there is room for that conversation. But I think that that takes a smaller precedent, in my humble opinion, that takes a smaller precedent than me arguing about this and not doing the work of expanding the liberty movement. And as we get more people in the liberty movement, we can maybe have different ideas and sculpt to a solution around this, right? And, and I'm not mad at that. I think that a lot of libertarians are very, very smart, right? And because they're very, very smart and a lot of them are fucking dweebs and nerds that never dealt with real life outside, we need more people that are strong and are gonna deal with the world as is. The reality is, Trump is unfortunately the best the GOP has right now. Unfortunately, as far as we're talking about populist ideas, you have to, because you, you mentioned populist and popular, you know, libertarians and shit like that, right? Pop culture. Pop culture. Elections are popularity contests on a local level, on a city level, on a state level, whatever. My point in saying this is to get the message out to be a little bit more popular with it, we have to do that. Otherwise, you got people like me that had this concept of liberty and didn't until maybe seven or eight, nine, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. understand the concept of a libertarian party. It had to be introduced. So if there's pop culture conversations happening, when we have a conversation about guns, when we have a conversation about liberty, when we have a conversation about clear government overreach, it is a pop culture topic that we have to, engage and utilize to educate people on. Some mm. people are going to disagree with that approach. If you are popular and populist and you're not well-versed and anchor in the liberty concept, it's, it's a waste. If you are really, really smart about liberty, right? Really, really smart about liberty and you can't get popular with the message and make it, it's a waste. Sure. There has to be a balance. In the gun sure. community, we say this, the more accessible your firearm is, the less safe it is. The more safe it is, the less accessible it is. You have to find a balance. To me, I believe that let's get more people into the fold. Let's have them have these struggles around liberty. We have a Libertarian 101 class on solutionaryuniversity.org. Get as many people into the fold as possible. Same as the gun community. There, there's that entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> when people get in, when people get into the gun community, some people are gonna like Glocks. Some people are going to go buy the solutionary yeah. rifle. Some people are going to like three gun shooting competition. Maj, I, I, I got, I got one, one more. I want to get to the pop culture stuff. Okay. Because you are, you're passionate. I love it. You want to convey the ideas to people. And I agree with you that if you're just spending your time in a room, reading a book and not actually getting into out into the community, you're not doing anything. And I'll tell you this, anytime, if I can get there, if you want some nerdy white guy to come with you to talk to you, so I'll go to any neighborhood anywhere in this country. Yeah. That's the first thing. But what I'm talking about, and I never even really heard of her until I was at the Connecticut thing. So I, I started following Josie, the redheaded libertarian. Yeah. I see her calling people gays and retards on X. Some people are gay and some people are retards. Yeah, that's not a way to bring people into the movement. That's the, I can that's understand the that you feel That's that. the bottom line. I, no, also, no, no. Let, let me, let me. It's levels. And I on that level that you're at, I understand it, right? Yeah. Also, I have a t-shirt that says, fuck your pronouns. I have yeah. a t-shirt that says, fuck your pronouns. Yeah, I don't care. It's not, That's... It's, 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 not, it's not the most inviting. I agree. Now, do I promote that one as much? No. But when there's times where it fits, for example, this lady that I've argued with that was a transgender advocate and activist in Philadelphia that I know personally, that I argued with, I'm like, something's wrong with you. I went back and forth and they tried to be very disrespectful to me. So I was disrespectful to them back. I said, mm -hmm. fuck your pronouns, right? Saying mm -hmm. this to say, this person has just been charged with the molestation of two children. Okay. So it's relative. I, if, if Now at the same time, I kick it, hang out with, chop it up with Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. There's pictures all over the internet. I'm not telling... Caitlyn Jenner, fuck your pro because it's the approach. My point in saying sure. that is mm -hmm. now, 
Can some people view that T-shirt as not the best way to do outreach? I 100% agree. Do I have to take that T-shirt off my site? No, I fucking do not. Of course not. Here's, here's, here's another you example. Do whatever you want. It's the, a matter the, of the New Hampshire dudes with. that were talking about maybe Nina Turner should pick some cotton. I said, I don't think that's the best way to do outreach in urban America. I'm it's you not. in that scenario. Yeah, and I I can't stand Nina Turner, but you're absolutely right. Okay. We follow yeah. each other on social media. I talk I, to her every couple of months. Yeah. My so, point, my point in saying this is I'm not disagreeing with you principally in your ability mm -hmm. to express that. What I am saying though is I do think that there's levels to it and there's a balance between completely neutering ourselves and being so extreme that we completely damage our outreach. Okay. So I'm somewhere in the middle there. Right. Okay. The, la the last thing, and she said this at the, at the meeting, when she referred to an invasion on our borders. Now, mm -hmm. Josie's someone that touts herself as a constitutional expert over and over again. I'm, I'm seeing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's an easily, I, and by easily, I mean easily winnable debate to demonstrate that constitutionally speaking, the people coming over the southern border, the southern border, are not an invasion. It's not even. It's very easy. My Wait, how is it easy? Tell me how it's easy. Don't just say it's easy. You got okay. Well, you look at the word invasion in the con. First of all, you go to Article One, Section Eight, and you'd see what powers does the federal government have? They have no power over immigration. That's one. Two, <laughs> two. You go and you see where they said that the the, the gov federal government owes the states the right. To, to protect them against invasion. So you you could look up one, you can go to Samuel Johnson's dictionary. I think it's 1785. So it's contemporary. The dictionary that the founders were using, look up invasion, see what it means. Or you can read Madison's report of 1800, which is the father of the constitution and see what he says is an invasion. And he explicitly mm -hmm. says that it, an invasion has to do with a foreign country, an army coming in. Or you could just read oh, so the wait, Constitutional wait. Convention. Did, did you debates. miss the 12th? Let me ask you this. And again, yeah. conceptually and morally, I'm there. I want I want to be able to be in Africa as much as I want to be, China as much as I want to be, India as much as I want to be. I don't I hate filling out and getting for waiting for my visa. So I'm gonna be clear about that. However, 12,000 people into through the southern border last mm. week, mm. able-bodied. Over 17 men, 12,000. Okay. Yeah. What is that to you? Well, first of all, it, it, it's not an invasion. That's what is it? Not what it ain't. What it's, is it? Well, right now, under the current system, it's 12,000 people or 12 million, you said, or 12,000? 12, 12, Last 12, week. It's 12,000 people entering the country illegally because they're violating the law. But so are they? So if I illegally come into your home, am I invading your house? <laughs> well, the problem is, is, no, no, no. It, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm house, gonna answer one you. of me. I'm going one to answer me. you. Hold on, I'm gonna answer you. You could commit a home invasion based on the legal definition of home invasion. So you could be invading one, my hold on, hold on. You so asked me one of me. To answer it. You can invade my house based on contemporary dictionary definitions, but you so can't go by me, is it is it me invading your house where you have a border? If you one me. Go, if you're going by contemporary meaning now, dictionary definitions, sure. Uh -huh. Constitutionally, with which Josie claims she's a constitutional expert. So yes, so yes, I would be invading the border of your house. Sure, and there's certain contexts okay. in which it, they can be referred to as invading. So what? So not what, constitutionally. So what are these twelve thousand age appropriate for war? What they what are, are they doing? Don't say what it's not. You're saying it's I not said that I told you already right now what they are is people is entering it? the country is, is illegally. People entering the country illegally. illegally. Yeah. Yeah. And the law, and what I'm gonna say is the laws by which they're barred from coming into the country are illegal because they violate the constitution, which is the highest law of the land. So it's a violation of the constitution, which is what Josie said. No, Josie's for the the government keeping immigrants out. She's not she's Bro. not for letting them in. It's a Bro. violation of the Constitution to have federal immigration laws. Come on. So here's here's my argument. Come on, let me show you my stepson. Wait, Say wait. Hi. Hey, what's up? Say hey, hi, Maj. What's hey, up? Hi. Say I love liberty. I love liberty. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> okay, I'll be right with you. Go ahead. So so here's here's the here morally, constitutionally, this is a great passionate debate. Sure. Not 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 opposed to it. I would love to 
have a debate on it and watch and we raise money for doing outreach, a Soho Forum debate, 100%. Run it. Now that we've gotten that moral component out of the way, right? I have to now go to, and my, my understanding of both so-called sides of that so-called argument, right? Now I have to go to reality. Either A, these are 12,000 men that were sent here to extract resources, breaking the law to do so, the current law. That's one. Or two, it's somebody sending someone here through the back door, knowing that we have weak immigration policies. Congress has kicked the can. I think the immigration should 100% re be reformed and updated. I think we're missing out to your point. I think we're missing out on some solid people that are really, 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 really trying to come here and do hard, serious work. I agree with that. The current reality is I don't know which one is which. I do not. And I'm not going to leave my hut or my door or my country open to that while we try to figure it out. I think we figure it out first and the moral conversations can happen simultaneously. I'm there. But to say we should just completely ignore it for this is why libertarians get called your guys are utopians because there's not a balance between nah there's hard working motherfuckers and we said give me your poor your time ellis island was the spot for motherfuckers coming through irish asian indian whatever the fuck yeah. right? and all the arguments yeah. used today were used against them too by the way and i'm not debating that i'm a person that's going to hold everybody accountable to the balance my highest alignment is to the truth I'm not saying that that means that these people are deliberately misrepresenting what libertarianism means, nor does that mean that I'm saying that you're 100, 1,000% wrong. I think some of your framing and your characterisms of some of those people may be a little off, but I think this is a great conversation for a moral space. None of that shit, all of that shit pales in comparison to while the jobs are dwindling, while the motherfucking crime rates for whatever reason over maybe the government was fucking shutting down the government and businesses for a couple of years. Those are bigger fish for me to fry. And so this is how we have to kind of like put those conversations on the back burner a little bit to try to like course correct the nation. The reality is government is too big. Whether you're Republican, Rhino, GO GOP, Libertarian, Independent, Everybody should be on that accord. We can all, except Democrat, because they're like, we want more government. My point in saying that is that's what I want to do. I think our approach should be getting more people in. And as we get more people in, there's going to be a basic thing that is libertarian 101. Do you want less government? Do you want more ownership? Do you want more autonomy for your individual life right now? Yes? Cool. Maybe you shouldn't vote Democrat. Let's start there. Our outreach, just like you're saying, you have a viewpoint that the going back and forth about Israel is less productive of an outreach tactic. I would contend and challenge you, my brother, your focus on what they're doing is more so than focusing on doing the outreach in the community to bring people into liberty. So just like you'll challenge them that way, I have to challenge you that way. It's fair. And all, all I'm saying, all I would say in response to that is, in order to communicate effectively, you've got to be. People have to know what's being communicated, and if you've got a lot of different people expressing different ideas but going by the same terminology, it makes it very difficult. No, I have not. no doubt. No, it's not. You just explained. You just explained it, America. It's a bunch I, of people in this bitch with different viewpoints. <laughs> You just explain freedom. Hold on. And so why not is, just use the term is it, liberal? Is it more? Is it more why, difficult? Maj, why don't you just use the term liberal? I anyway. do at times. Well, good. I think that maybe we should take that back or win. I do. But oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the person. I'm the person that that says no, no, no. I'm a, I'm the person that took BLM. I'm the person that made BGM from BLM. Nice. I'm 100 percent right. on board. So would you, I'm, Maj, you if you and me are out, I want to ask you a quick question because we yeah. I, I got to get to my Go ahead. other duties. If you and I were to go out, would you be with me on saying, okay, we need to end the war on drugs, protect the Second Amendment, cut taxes until they're gone, privatize education, stop funding foreign wars? I'm guessing you would be with me on all those things. Yes. Those are the types of things I would much, much rather be talking about. Boom. Believe me, I would. 
All right. Mosh, you um are, are raising some money, first of yeah. all, right? So I want you to tell people where where they can find you to raise money and where they can find you in general for all yeah. the good stuff you do with salut salutationary lifestyle. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for this spirited to spirited debate. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. I think you're wonderful. Right? I, I love someone. Listen, I, my best friend, we spent a decade and a half arguing because yeah. that's how you get more clarity in your thinking. And here's the beautiful it. part of it. After this, we would probably still be able to go drink some blood of patri uh, blood of tyrants wine, right? We would still be able to have a liquid freedom, right? <laughs> energy drink. We would be able to probably still get some first form energy. This is all of the branding, right? My point in saying nice. that there is a way for us to have passionate conversations about the moral areas and struggle around or sculpt around that and still go be Team Liberty outside. And if anything, I, I want to appreciate and acknowledge that um, from you today, as well as I want everyone to cut up chop, chops of this interview, share it all over the place, tag everybody that you agree. You don't, you disagree about Mike Heiss and Josie and Clinton, myself and all Dave, all of those guys, Larry, Eric July, big boy from Outcast, who's also a libertarian. Tag these folks, share it all around. Share these types of conversations all around where we can show, now nah, we can argue and have disagreements about things and sculpt around it and still get back to the mission. That's that, that. as well as if you guys want to, um, if we've added any value today, support the work. Give sengo.com forward slash solutionary. We do libertarian classes in person. All of the in-person classes are free because of you guys' voluntary donations. We got about $240,000 left to raise to buy the building and pay for all of 2024's classes. Um, go support there, guys. Share the work. You can find me on Instagram, maj 2 ray 999 on Instagram and Twitter, Big Daddy 2 ray on Instagram, um, as well as Twitter. I said Twitter. I said Instagram. And the website, solutionaryuniversity.org. Register for a class. Um, and lastly, let's be kind to each other, guys. We just lived through one of the biggest psyops by the government, our fellow liberty lovers, our fellow Americans, our fellow humans are not our enemies. The government, overreaching government is. So be kind to each other. We all survived and a lot of people killed themselves during a COVID overreach, all of these different things. Be kind to each other. You survived the biggest psyop ever. Um, be kind to yourself um, and enjoy those small victories as you guys are moving about today. Thanks, Maj. I appreciate you being here. For now, this is The Rational League who is signing out. I'm Michael Leibowitz. Remember, Give me your likes. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think. It helps. Till next time.